can only imagine the anger, the frustration, the pain of being a family member, a parent in the Idaho 4 case, having your child, Xana, Ethan, Kaylee, Maddie, ripped right out of the entire family picture and the future that was all laid out before them. Still yet to be lived. And here's the remnants left behind for the family to try to make sense of what actually happened and why. Why? But think about that. You just can't even get answers to your questions. Not only because even prior to the gag order, which now has restrained everything, but even prior to that, law enforcement didn't want to give you any details. Yet one of them, one set of parents, literally made the statement, I paid for that. I'm A.R. Hayes. This is a convict's thoughts. Who did you pay for that? What did you pay for? Of course, there's so many things that could have been the meaning behind that statement. I get that. I'm not bashing the family, but I do in my thoughts. My thoughts, ladies and gentlemen, this is not based off of actual known knowledge. I have not had conversation with them in regards to it. They wouldn't give me the time of day to even sit down and have that discussion. Even if I requested it, it wouldn't matter. And that's their right as parents. It's their child that was taken, not mine. But when I sit back and I watch you put yourselves front and center in front of all making your comments and doing your so-called shows to bring attention to the case as if we need more of that. I listen to what you have to say and it makes my mind twirl. Do you have the right to feel any way and which way you choose to do so. You have the right to grieve any which way you choose to do so. You can make any statements that you choose to do so. You're not held by any gag order. Nobody's confining your freedom of speech. But at the end of the day, as I've watched everything you've had to say, as well as many others, you've raised questions upon your wording. And yes, I'm talking about one family, because the others don't seem to talk as much. Some don't talk at all. Some aren't even in a position to have the capability to speak. But the two parents, a mother and a father, that stand out to all and have done so since the very beginning, the Gonzalves, have been named to be the alphas when it comes to speaking as parents about the Idaho 4 case and against suspect Brian Koberger. They've taken their different platforms to be able to do so. 
whether it be social media and Facebook, to even doing shows with things like Dateline and 48 Hours and, of course, News Nation, Brian Enton, all prior to this defendant actually even getting into the courtroom for trial. But the statement, I paid for that, which came right after answering the question that law enforcement was giving them absolutely no information in regards to the case whatsoever. Then I hear the details that come out of your mouth in regards to the case. Things like, he was close enough, he connected to their Wi-Fi. He hunted them. He stalked them. He watched them from very close proximity. All the little details, and there are so many out there, I can't even name them all. I wouldn't have enough time in this video to go through all of the different... Oh, yeah, he didn't have to go upstairs. There's a key one as well. Or she was trapped up against the wall, fighting for her life in a room that was so small you couldn't even maneuver in and out of it, said by a couple that had never, ever been to the home. Makes sense. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when they state that they paid for that, I'm assuming... They're speaking in regards to their private investigator, which we all heard about at the very beginning of this case. We know that the Gonsalves family not only hired a lawyer, Mr. Gray, but they also hired a private investigator to look at the case investigate on top of that on their very own family Facebook page it clearly states that they are a private investigator which I mean I kind of have this feeling within me if my child had been ripped from my hands in a manner like this tearing her directly out of my fatherly love, I personally would do everything to find out what had happened to my daughter as well. But because I know the way that these types of things typically work, law enforcement, FBI, forensic investigators do the investigation of the actual crime that transpired. Not only the crime scene, but they interview the witnesses, they talk to the experts, they put together the case, which would then be bound over to the prosecuting attorneys and the district attorney's office to see if they would like to go ahead and bring charges. So my question to you in this, in regards to the information that the Gonzalez are putting out, <clears throat> which they continue to choose mainstream media right before court hearings, <clears throat> where'd you get your information? Who'd you pay for that? Because we've heard the rumors even to the point that maybe a little bit of grand jury tampering. Maybe a little bit of trying to track down a state's witness. Who else have you tried to talk to? I, I know you receive an abundance of correspondence 
not only through social media, email, text messaging, every which way possible to get you your info. There's no doubt in my mind you've gone to the black market to try to find anything and everything you can get your hands on in regards to this case, and that's your right. But when you get out before everybody and make a statement in regards to this case and possible evidence of the case and possible statements of guilt of a suspect where did you get that information who told you how Kaylee was found on the bed who gave you the information in regards to the setup of the actual bedroom in the home who gave you the information he didn't have to go up the stairs? I get information gets given to you via like the autopsy reports on maybe how the wounds were different. I get a lot of that information can come out in various different documents to you and you are very capable of reading, analyzing, and putting it all together and formulating your educational Dictation of what that is as evidence. However, who gave you the information of how Kaylee was trapped and slumped against the wall in the bedroom after the attack that took both her and Maddie's life in that little room? For some reason, I have a gut feeling that did not come from law enforcement. I have a very good gut feeling that didn't even come from the prosecutor's. That's a very touchy type of thing to talk about. And I know for a fact they did not show you pictures. No way. I'm not new to the scene. Like, I've been around the block. You did not see crime scene photos of that bedroom. Now... To be able to make that statement, you got the information from somewhere. Whether it's true or not, it's a whole other story. Because I haven't heard anybody that actually investigated the scene make that very statement. It wasn't stated within the PCA. Did you get more of a discoverable evidence document that you were able to read through that described that scene better than anything we've been able to see? It seems as though the prosecution has a hard enough time disclosing evidence to the defense. So I'm just wondering, did they give you, Mr. Gonsalves and Mrs. Gonsalves, an actual file with documented evidence of the Idaho 4 crime? Was it your private investigator? I just kind of shake my head in disbelief because I highly doubt he was allowed in the house. <coughs> Ever. Not right after the crime? happen not when you hired him not down the road not today the house is gone and if he was ever allowed to see the crime scene well wouldn't that be under the gag order and he should never have clued you into that information I'm just wondering. And why would we speak about some of the things that you've spoken about prior to this ever seeing a courtroom when you've clearly made the statements that you haven't been included in many of the conversations regarding what happened in this crime? I know. I'm sure over time with all the insurances that the 
prosecutor seems to be giving you now that they have the right person, that they've been more open and willing to discuss that with you behind closed doors, knowing that there's a good possibility when they do that type of stuff that you're just going to take it to mainstream media and talk about it. Prosecution's excited about that. Oh, wait, they can't do it. It's under gag order. So anything that's been found as evidence after that gag order was put into place, they couldn't even tell you. It's not allowed. But have they? Or who did? Who gave you that information? Who's breaking the gag order to get you information? Or... Are you kind of like what News Nation says and you have your trusted sources? <coughs> Is it possible maybe some of your information came from some of those college students that just happened to arrive on scene prior to the crime scene being locked down? You know, the ones that went into the house before law enforcement was able to secure the crime scene? Did you get your information from some of these people that visually saw things that now just might be some of the so-called witnesses that won't open their doors to even talk to the defense? Hmm. That's pretty interesting, too. I'm not one, Steve and Christy Gonzalez, that doesn't feel as though you deserve to know that information. I, as a parent, would expect it. I really would. I would demand it. I would demand to know what happened to my daughter. And I feel as though through some of the things that I saw very early with you, you felt as though, even though they weren't talking to you, that you knew things and were going to say them if someone didn't step up to the plate and start telling the truth. Nobody stepped up to start telling the truth. So are these the tidbits of things that you know that you threatened to release back then. Are these little tidbits coming out now? Maybe your news nation's trusted source from a victim's family that's discussing the young lady who was friends with Brian Koberger, who requested Brian Koberger help her put in a security system for her home that never once made any complaint, not back then, not when this crime materialized, not when you arrested Brian Koberger, and not even today, but, you know, that trusted confidential source told a victim's family who decided to tell that story for her. I'm sorry, I mean, I just, it racks my brain because I feel like every time a court hearing is about ready to happen, we have a new mainstream media News Nation interview, a 48 hours broadcast. Hell, do we even need to go to trial? Is it over? <clears throat> Should this kid already <laughs> just get on with the appeals? Should he just be transferred out of that jail and moved over to death row? And begin the appeal process? Is he guilty? Are we wasting our time with this?
I have a hard time bringing myself in front of the camera to talk about the Idaho 4 anymore because I don't know what's real or not because even what we think is evidence just possibly isn't. How do I know Kaylee was trapped and couldn't get out of the corner of the small enough bedroom that you can't even maneuver in and out of it, but somebody was capable of taking two lives in that very room, and they were easily able to get in and out of it without leaving more evidence than a little knife sheath laying next to the body. That's odd to me. No other evidence. Hmm. But I just question who gave you the information that you have when you very clearly stated law enforcement was not giving you information but then now you make it seem which is a part of this Idaho case all the way across the board and you just keep bringing it to light it's okay to break a gag order as long as you do it in the Idaho way. It's okay to tamper with the jury proceedings in the grand jury as long as you do it the Idaho way. It's okay to try to talk to a state witness as long as you do it the Steve Gonzalez Idaho way. And it's sure as hell a welcomed idea to get on mainstream media at every TV outlet for big, huge ratings and dollars as long as you do it the Idaho way. Which at the end of the day, and it's the only sensible thing I could say out of all of this, and maybe this video just isn't even worth the time of day, but at the end of the day, the only sensible thing I can say is, if you can lie, you can manipulate, you can spin the complete thought of truth and not provide anything any evidence to back that up, including the CAST report that supposedly shows the movements that are necessary to prove this case, if you could do all those things, if you could lie, cheat, steal, rob, do all these things, manipulate, disrupt, cheat the system, it's all okay. It's the Idaho way. Get your conviction the Idaho way and then let it just go down the road. It's either going to be wanted appeal or the man's going to lose his life. Sit there for 30 years to be able to go home innocent or my firing squad it's just my thoughts it's just my feelings it's just my opinion but everything I watch and I hope all of you are seeing it too the trusted source the Gonzalez family statements where are you getting your info because the prosecution hasn't even organized their evidence so what could they have shared with you I'm A.R. Hayes. It's Convict's Thoughts. Just another Idaho 4 rant and rave with a few of my own thoughts. Talk to you again soon.